What we do is when we get a call, uh, we go through a triage process. We have to determine if, if there's a match, if it's feasible to do the project. And what we're doing is we're listening to the story. Uh, for a lot of callers think that forensic accountants or fraud examiners can do a lot more than, than we can do. We don't have a crystal ball. We, we can't produce records that don't exist. Uh, we can't easily find hidden bank accounts that haven't been disclosed, things like that. So we've got to make sure that on that initial call, we don't want to spend too much effort on a case, especially if there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to help resolve the case. So we go through what I call a feasibility assessment. And we just look to see, is there a potential case here? Do we have the right background? We get calls for things that we, re we refer out all the time because it's just not what we do. Sounds like there's a case there, but just not our background. Once we get past feasibility, then we got to go to, okay, next step in the triage process is, is there an engagement to be performed here? Do we want to do it? Is the timing right? Do we have available resources? Are there going to be records? Is there a place for us to work? Are our goals in sync with what the stakeholders' goals are? Our, our goals are to solve their issue and to help produce a report that's meaningful and will help work towards resolving the matter. If that's not going to happen, then I, I question why are you hiring us in the first place. Once we get past that, then we get to the next step, which is planning the engagement. And I'm a big believer that even if we do it informally, we put together some kind of a work program that consciously makes you think about the steps you're going to take. All right, we want to take it on. This is how I think we should do it. And it's good experience for the people who are less experienced because it forces them to think about things. And then before they go out into the field, if they run it past me, now I can tell them this is good, but I'd probably do it in a different order. And I can kind of ensure that they're doing it the way I want it done each time. Then out into the field we go. And sometimes it goes according to plan, and sometimes it goes its own direction. But that plan's going to guide us whether we do interviews first or we do them later. We can use that plan to come back and say, no, it's okay we went out of order because if you look back at the plan, we accomplished everything we wanted to. We didn't do it in the order we thought we would, but that plan forces us to not miss anything. You know, did we get an image of the hard drive? Well, it may take three months to get the laptop back from the employee. That's not going to prevent us from interviewing people while we're waiting, so we're just going to go out of order a little bit. We still want the laptop. So, and then the last thing is once we're finished with the case, we're going to document it. And ultimately what it's leading to is a written report, if one is required. In some most state courts, it, it's a state-by-state -state basis. In Connecticut, written reports aren't required. In federal court, a written report is required. So we're all working towards that end goal of what's the report going to say. And if it's not going to answer the question or it can't be written, then we tell the stakeholders we've gone as far as we can. And it's just, it's not a case that's going to be meaningful.